Welcome back to GH Today here on GH1 TV. It's time for the next segment of the program. I told you we'll be having an interview uh, with the MD4 STC, the State Transport Company, uh, Nanakomia. Uh, he used to be the Director of Communications for the NPP, and he also used to be MP for uh, the Okaiko in North constituency. Nana, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Lanta. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Good to be in your studios for the first time. Yes, yes. And we're happy to have you in our studio for the very uh, first time. Bolare is here. He's an old friend. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you feel that. Uh, we, we're, we're very glad that you feel at home. But do you feel at home at the STC? Well, it's, um, you know, STC has gone through uh, quite a period. Mm. Uh, went through the normal difficulties that uh, state enterprises went through. So somewhere in 1999, uh, President Rawlings' time, it was uh, put on diversity, yeah. like many of the state enterprises at that time. It was actually acquired by a private operator in uh, 1999-2000. And then the... It, it, because of all kinds of difficulties, the state under President Kufo took it back. Um, 2002, 2003, mm -hmm. took it back. Um, but it still had a lot of difficulties. Operational difficulties. Financial difficulties. Um, in that long period, from the diversity and the post diversity in 2003, 2002, 2003. The company had to do all kinds of desperate things to survive, um, including um, letting go some prime landed properties that they had, um, some prime properties, land, landed properties in Takradi, they had to let it go. Um, even the head office, mm -hmm. prime land at head office, four or five acres, had to let go. Even the MD's bungalow, yeah, uh, they had to let it go. All in a bit to survive. Then they took loans to pay salaries and all of that. So it was. It, it's been a very turbulent period. You put on diversity, it still didn't work. So. What it means that private people came in, they call them VANEF, yeah, came Vanef in to, to, to manage it from 1999 to 2003, it still didn't work. And around 2014-2015, the government was thinking about putting it back on diversity. Um, the MD at that time, uh, Mr. Nwama Donko, sadly he passed, he passed last week. But he convinced the government at the time. To give it one more shot, mm -hmm. one more uh, try to support the company yeah. to save to save to save yeah, the company. Yeah, and so they listened to him, and in 2016 they provided um, another 50 buses for the company to give it a new lease, a new lease of life to see if it if it can do well mm -hmm. because the government was really tired and wanted to. Just let it go. So from late 2016, they had this new leash of life with 50 brand new luxury buses. And um, they started picking up under the uh, state of Madonko. Then I went in, in the middle of 2017. Yes. Mm -hmm. And May, June 2017. Mm -hmm. So they had operated these new buses for about nine months. Mm -hmm. And there was a difficulty. The difficulty was that, and it had been the same difficulty over the period. The difficulty was that, so now they had 50 new buses. But you, you always found 20, 22, 23 buses sitting down idle. Not being patronized, not, not being used. Not being used. Yeah. Because they were not being patronized. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, so when I got there, this was the problem that they had. They were only using just about half the buses that had been given to them. We understand it's a personal request you made. 
you know, for, wanting to go to the STC. Yes. Well, the, the, the president at that time had a different plan for me. I, it didn't gel with um, my own um, plan. So we talked about it. And then uh, the president was disappointed. And um, that's... I didn't seem to go by what he thought I should do for for his government. Yeah. So we came to a compromise, and I said, "Let me go to a place where um, there is a need for um, some serious, you know, thinking mm -hmm. in the sense that let me let me not go to a place which is already up and running and doing well. Let me go to a place where there's a difficulty." and see if I can make a difference, see it as a challenge. So the president agreed that, okay, if that's what you want to do, let's see, let's see it. So, mm. so this, when I got there in the May, June 20, uh, 2017, um, Senor Madonko had done well to convince the government of President Mahama to provide 50 new buses. But for nine months, you still had about 22, nearly half of those uh, fleets. You still had them packed, um, not being patronized. So that was a challenge mm -hmm. that um, I met. And the board at that time uh, charged me and the new management to do all we can to be able to maximize the... the the patronage of those buses. If you have 20 or 22 brand new, new buses, buses, buses in yeah. the bus, you know. So, um, what we did, myself and the new team that I had come together with um, the existing staff, uh, we formed a new management committee where everybody was involved. The drivers had a representation, the workshop had a representation marketing, sales, operations. Um, everybody was there. The unions were mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the issues, um, the problems that we're, we're having in deploying those 20 buses. Then it became clear to us at a point. An incident happened. On Fridays, less the last Friday of the month, there's a big event in Kumasi. So there's a huge demand for buses from Accra to Kumasi. And on those days, those last Fridays, those buses are patronized. Which means that it's just that the location of the terminal mm -hmm. was not as accessible to passengers as some of the competition. Yeah. So when on that on those the last Fridays when there's a huge demand and the competition didn't have buses, then people would troop to STC. Yeah. So it gave us the idea that the location was probably the issue. And so to test it, we moved the terminal to a new location to Nkruma Circle. Mm -hmm. Just to test the hypothesis that we had. And it just and worked. And business picked up. It picked up. Um so from do and you know Accra Kumasi is the biggest commercial uh, route yes. if you want to do commercial transport in this country. That's where the largest volumes are. The Accra Kumasi through to uh, Boga connects about six, seven regional capitals, and the Kumasi segment is really heavy. Now, they they couldn't do three, four buses to Kumasi a day before I went. Now, when we moved the terminal to Nkrumah Circle, the very first day, we did 14. The very first day? The very first day, we did 14. So, the hunch that we had was right. That problem was that the buses were not accessible mm -hmm. to the traveling public. And so, by moving the terminal to Circle, Nkrumah Circle, you now made the buses accessible um, the average traveler, I don't know if you are an average traveler, mm -hmm. but if you have a car and you wanted to travel to Kumasi or you know, in Koko or wherever, yeah. and you have a car, you can drive uh, to the STC station. You can park your car. We have a, what we call a park and ride. Two, three days, you come back, you take your car. 
But for everyone like you who probably has a car and can travel to STC station and who is traveling to Kumasi at, say, uh, 10 a.m., for everyone like you, there are another 500 people also traveling but who do not have cars. Mm -hmm. And they will move from their neighborhoods, uh, Alajo, Newtown, Kokomimle, Dantsoma, Nondoko, Mamprobi. They will move with the trotter or the taxi. The trotter or the taxi will drop them at Circle, in Kruma Circle. Because that's where the big terminals yeah. are. Sort of a the, central point. Yes. Yeah. So when they are dropped at Circle, from all over the, the, the city, and they drop them at the new so-called new plant station or Kanishi station or whatever across the street is vip next to the term the, the uh, new plant station is oa on the other side is vvip mm -hmm. and they all With have the good buses and all of those yes people. so why would they travel a kilometer to stc they would not so when STC now moved to Seca, so when the average traveler got down from their trotter at Seca and they crossed the street, they, they can also have STC. So that's what. Mm -hmm. um, so today we do, on the average, about um, 18 buses on the average to Kumasi. About 18 so, buses a day yes. to Kumasi. So that's a, that's a significant Now, the, the, the immediate problem that arose, yeah. that, so now all those 22, 23 buses, yeah are now being deployed but the immediate problem that arose after two days or three days was that they were now stuck in kumasi and they, they have to come back to Accra. they couldn't come back because you have the same situation in kumasi yeah stc has this nice terminal at a place called idum mm -hmm. which has been, terminal yes which yeah. has been the terminal since uh, Kwame Nkrumah's days but the, op the operational theater for passenger movement had moved and it was that kjtia mm -hmm. and asafo and so on yeah. so if you are the doom the trotro the taxi will bring the average traveler from all over kumasi mm -hmm. to asafo. asafo yeah when they came to asafo how were they going to get to a doom and so all these buses had now moved from circle 24 25 buses to a doom and there were no passengers so we had to go to kumasi and repeat what we did mm -hmm. And so we found a place at Asafo. And there was a problem with the private people. I don't yes. know if you remember. And that was resolved. Yeah. And then, so now we're able to do like 16, 17 from Circle. And Asafo is able to do another 15 mm. back. So STC is in, is in good so standard now? The, the, I mean, our fortunes saw a dramatic increase mm. and improvement. So we we're, were able to pay... For that first one year or so, we were able to pay government a million dollars every six months. Oh, wow. Um, we were paying our creditors because the revenues were, were good. Um, and then we decided that and suddenly we were short of buses. Mm -hmm. The 50 buses were not enough. So we needed more. We needed more. So we spoke to government that instead of paying you this $1 million every six months, why don't you live, why don't we leverage it to buy more buses and the government agreed and so on our own balance sheet we were able to acquire a hundred new buses wow which so is that still making profits now i'll come to it which had never happened and so we got a hundred as we speak as i speak from the 50 buses that came in in the late 2016 we have now gotten a hundred and fifty uh, 100 buses on our own and then 50 buses with arrangements with private sector. So we've got about 150 buses in addition to the 50 that, that was given by government. So now we don't worry government with buying buses mm -hmm. and all of that. The problem that has arisen is that since 2020 the fuel price has been rising literally every two weeks yeah especially when COVID came yeah and transport fares have not been rising in tandem if you 
look at the figures, for example, if you, if, if you take May, the month of May 2020, a liter of fuel was uh, four cities, 10 pesos. Mm -hmm. Today, as we speak, the same liter of fuel is 13 cities, 59 pesos. Yeah. So that's an increase of about 240 percent. Mm -hmm. That's an astro astronomical increase. In that same two-year period, the fair increment that have been allowed, I know the fares are set by a bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and the petrol prices are set by the market. You know, so that problem. Now, the fair increases that have been allowed in that same two-year period, where fuel is gone by about 240 percent, the fair increase is gone 48 percent. So if you have any business where your cost, your direct cost, goes up 240 percent, and your direct revenue goes up 48 percent, you can imagine the difficulty. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what is squeezed as a mm -hmm. lot. We are talking to stakeholders in the industry right. to have a benchmarking mm -hmm. between fares and, 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 and fuel, fuel price and increase. That, that yeah. But we've been doing other things. We've, we've been, uh, we have a valuation department that we've commercialized. We have a car, a vehicle, a roadway fees testing center. Mm -hmm. Bring your cars to the place. Very modern, digital. It belongs uh, to the STC. Yes, mm -hmm. in partnership with the private private uh, private operator. And that's also bringing income. We've also uh, commercialized our driving school. It's a very modern, state of the art driving school. That the only driving school that has simulators. You know what they use f for the aircraft training of pilots. So you can go in there and um, simulate every road condition. So by the time you come onto the road, you're already a good driver. Right. I think it's the only driving school now. We've commercialized it. Um, so with commercial devaluation, if the, if the parcels have been revamped, they, they're doing quite well. So they support the company. If we were to rely on the bus fares alone, it would have been in horrible trouble. Mm. And we're hoping that so the, that's, engage, that's, Okay, well, I thought we just saw an example of the simulation. Oh, okay, I don't yeah. know, you have this footage. Yes. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> yes, your people came so to come the driving when, school. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, that the STC has been yes. doing. Yeah, so that's, so that's some right. good work that's been that's been going yes. on at the STC. Yes. So all yeah. these are the simulators. You can simulate every road condition for you. You can simulate night condition, mm -hmm. bright condition, curves, hilly, everything. So by the time you go onto the road, mm. and so they've been supporting us. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone who wants to learn how to drive can just go to the STC, and it's not too expensive. Right. When we are able to get the stakeholders. To come of the same mind, particularly government, that there has to be a benchmarking between petrol prices and fares, and we can get that benchmarking. Then FTC will just go through the roof. Mm -hmm. But now we are tightly squeezed because of this uh, mm -hmm. fuel prices going up literally every two weeks, yeah. and the fares staying the same. It's, it's a big problem. That's the biggest problem that we have today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But, I mean, all in all, STC is, is okay. I mean, aside of this problem, all in all, STC is doing pretty well. Our fleet strength is very good. Now we have, from 50, we have 150, 150 buses. buses. Mm. Now, the other point, the, I told you about the terminal. Yes. The, 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 the positioning. The, the position of the yes. terminals. Yes. That really is what saved us the period before the petrol crunch came in. So, based on the same principle, we are establishing terminals in very strategic places across the country. Okay. Uh, we have a new terminal in Medina, a new terminal coming up in Amasaman, a new one at Pokwasi, um, a new one at Kaswa. Even in Kumasi, we are diversified. So, with the new terminals and the new buses coming in, if we get the fares right, uh, the sky will be the limit. Okay, we'll be looking forward to that. But let's uh, let's now switch our attention to, you know, some some other issues of national concern. Um, 
Recently, a lot of people have been complaining about the state of the economy and just how bad it is and the toll it's taking on their pockets. Of course, you've alluded to the astronomical rise in fuel prices, for example, which is, which is one of the main things that a lot of people complain about. Um, the conversation among some people, and I know the opposition will hammer on this a lot, is that this government has, has failed to deliver on its promise to make the lives of Ghanaians better. So at this point, if you are speaking on behalf of government, how would you convince the ordinary Ghanaian out there that this government still has their best interest at heart and has not failed in delivering on its mandate of making the lives of the ordinary Ghanaian better? Mm. Well, um, we are in difficulties at the moment. No, nobody can deny that. Yes. I mean, the president had said so several times. Um, but if you looked at the record of this government between the period 2017 mm -hmm. to 2019, they were the best records in economic management, probably in the entire Fourth Republic. Some say it's because we are under an IMF program and we hadn't exited it yet. And so because of that, there were prudent economic measures in place which were restricting the government from going overboard. That's why we saw the figures we saw. Well... The previous government was in an IF program, was in an IMF program, yeah, for two years 2015 2016. Yes, but the economy got worse. So, if the IMF program alone is the panacea or the solution to balance of payment difficulties and uh, currency difficulties. The previous government was in an IMF program, the same IMF program, between um, 2015 and 2016. But look, just look at the statistics. It got worse. Um, they will tell you, oh, apart from the IMF, they also say we got some oil, they left us oil, yes. the, 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 the 10 oil fields, T and yes. short for yeah, in Tome and you know, on the Ivorian border, the one we had a problem. Which is true. Some new oil money came in. But the previous government, between 2011 and 2016, also got a lot of oil money that had been President Kufour, you know, the Jubilee. Mm -hmm. the they, Jubilee got, they got nearly $4 billion in oil money between 2011 and 2016. But still look at the performance. So, IMF fine, oil money fine, but you, it has to take management to put all of this together to produce a good result. The period after 2020, the difficulties that COVID has brought to the entire world economy. Mm -hmm. It's not just Ghana. It's not just the government of Ghana saying so. Yeah. Everywhere in the world, if, if you like put your uh, at Al Jazeera or CNN or BBC, they, they're talking about the global economic and financial crisis. And Ghana cannot be exempt. Mm. But um, ours seem to be biting more, you know. It seems to be biting more because our, of, fund, our, you see, the structure of our economy. Yes. Uh, we are not a rich country. Look, it's biting you. You are sitting here. Mm -hmm. I am sitting here. Mm -hmm. You have a stable job, which means a stable income. I have a stable job, which means a stable income. But we are being beaten by the economic difficulty, yes. the CD and all of that. But how about our brother who hasn't got a stable job? He'll be beating harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Yes. But you are still being beaten. But so... Um, even the rich countries, mm -hmm. Europe, today look at the value of the euro to the dollar. Yeah. Check it out. The value of the euro to the dollar. Check it out. It's falling like a stone. And, you know, the Americans too, because their currency is the world's reserve currency, they have raised interest rates in America as we speak. And so everybody is moving their dollar from all over the world to America because of the, of the interest rate. And I'm not the one saying it. This is, this is the fact. I think they've raised it by 1.7% or something, which is really high. And everybody is moving their dollar back to America and putting it in American stocks. And the euro 
I mean, the European zone is falling, the currency is falling so badly. Inflation. Look, if you have friends in, in the UK, for example, you, you can go to a shop and buy five bundles of toilet roll. They would, you can buy maybe one. That's difficult everywhere, even with the rich countries. I'm not saying the, the government today uh, could not have put in better shops. We could have. But you recognize that there's a major crisis. Look, if you take STC, what COVID has done to us, when COVID came, you know they said we should do social distancing on the buses, which means that for a 42-seater bus, you could only take 20 people mm -hmm. for five months because the, government, the president was very focused on saving lives. For so those five months that we were taking half load, but buying the same fuel, we lost nearly 8 million cities. When, after in August, so this was from like March, March to August, when it was lifted, you know, the borders were closed. And they are still closed. The land borders. Uh, even though Ghana has opened its border, the francophone uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the border is still closed. Mm -hmm. So you still, we have uh, terminals in Abidjan, uh, Ouagadougou, Lomé, and Kutonu. And these terminals were generating one third of our revenue. And you know, they have a stable currency. So the operations there were very good. Mm -hmm. For the last 22 months, that operation has been cut. It's cost STC in terms of revenue nearly 70 million cities. Now, if one small company we lost 8 million cities with the social distancing, where you're supposed to take half load, and then we've lost another 70 million with the border closure. It's one small company. Mm -hmm. Multiply it across the entire economy. You know, so. So is, is it that it's not the fault of the government that we are I'm we not, are where I'm we not are. saying I'm the not, government has no role to play because I mean we've heard the explanations COVID nineteen now it's the Russia Ukraine war I heard the vice president talk about the quadruple whammy including the financial sector cleanup and excess capacity charges among other things so it looks like the government is blaming everything but themselves for the current economic challenges that we find ourselves in no, no. when they, all the people care about is you dealing with the challenges well and giving us respect. well the, the things that the vice president said are they true or not is it true that we had a financial crisis that cost 25 billion dollars that we didn't have is it true or not is it true that we had to pay excess capacity charges is it true or not it is true mm -hmm. president mahama had made the same complaint in 2016 the state of the nation address that is excess capacity was going to be a huge burden on the country. He had said so in his 2016 SONA address to Parliament. And he actually set up a committee in, 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 in April to review, you remember, to review the agreement mm -hmm. so that we can cut the excess capacity and the take off pay. You remember? So it, it was a huge problem that was recognized even in 2016. So it is true that we're paying, as, a, as we speak, there's a thousand five hundred megawatt excess capacity yeah. that we don't need. But all the idea was to sell them. But the cost of production of that thermal energy, it, uh, Cote d'Ivoire people don't want that cost. Togo don't want it. Burkina don't want it. So you are stuck with it, and you must pay for it because that's the agreement that was signed. The banking crisis. Uh, people say, oh, but why collapse the banks? You could have done... Maybe we could have done... We've ended up spending about $25 billion or so, we're told. I mean, when, when we're told that the problem, you know, was was hovering at around 8 or $9 billion. So, I mean, the question people ask in that regard is, why, why spend so much when you could have saved the banks with a lesser amount? And now you blame that one for one of the reasons why we are we are struggling as a country. You know, when the banking crisis started in 2015, do you know how much the government of, at that time threw into the banking crisis? Today, as we speak, 
there are many owners of the banks mm -hmm. who are being prosecuted. Yeah. If I, I'd, well, you you will do your research, but I can give you the figures of the amounts that were thrown to those banks, and all of those monies went down the drain. You remember? They didn't do anything. You, when you read some of the testimonies from court, somebody is saying they took um, they took one fifty million or so as his arrangement fee, mm -hmm. the money that government gave to them to bail them out, and we are talking of six hundred million CDs, mm -hmm. one billion CDs being thrown at them so they can repair. It didn't mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. You are aware. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. So, an effort was made to bail them out. It didn't work. The people just reshuffled the money. You know. So, so, the, best the, whole to, so the best was to collapse the tax. I'm not, I'm not saying, is, I mean, every, this is not one plus one is equal to two. Mm -hmm. This is social science. Yes. So, I mean, the way you run this, your program is very good. But I'm sure... At a point you review and there's improvement. So you can always have an improved situation. I don't have a problem. But the situation that people talk that you are talking about, that oh, you could have just put the money back into the banks and save them. Yeah, and, and prosecute yeah. the people who are involved in mismanaging the funds. I mean like like it's been done with some of the people now. It, it's, it's Remove been, the problems and save, you, save like I'm saying and save save the institution. Like I'm saying a lot of that had been done by the previous government thrown in billions of cities to the banks they didn't work now mind you the banks have not been collapsed they've been merged mm -hmm. they've been merged and um, to make them more efficient but the depositors at least their monies have been saved because all of them were credited that's the 25 billion all the depositors were credited because the, the, their monies were going down the drain um you can always say with hindsight that maybe government could have done it this way or that way but i'm saying that in terms of direct injection into the banks billions were injected by the president mahama government it didn't work maybe we could have also done done it a second time tried it again but um that's what it is but you see beyond the walls today mm -hmm. there's a clear way out by government mm -hmm. if government was sitting and putting his hand and saying this has been caused by banking crisis been caused by COVID, this has been caused by ukraine war and this has been caused by ndc and so i'm not going to do anything about it then i would have a problem the government is doing something about it we've gone to the imf in fact the imf has set up a special desk at this period because over 100 countries since 2020 have gone to the IMF. Mm. Um, and so the IMF itself recognizes that there's a global economic and financial crisis. Mm. And they have set up a special funding, $70 uh, uh, billion dollars, uh, to cater for this particular period. And they are waiting for countries to come. Beyond the IMF, I mean, even with the IMF, I mean, people say that well, that's that's a sign of failure because it's only a failed government that goes to the IMF well um, and especially when the government said we are not going to the IMF and so and then later on you go to the IMF two, and then people are two, even calling for the head yes, of yes. the finance minister because of this I'm not surprised because of the earlier commitment but two two ways of looking at it you can see it's failure because the government said I wouldn't go yes but you can also see it as a government that is flexible that is prepared to bend to save his people i mean so government could have said uh we, we have already said we won't go to the imf so no matter how, what what won't go but clearly and your contemporaries in africa there must be about 30 countries that have gone to the imf they will give you a solution um the last time we went to the imf we went there because we had mismanaged our fundamentals you remember there was no crisis absolutely no crisis and we went to the imf in 2015 there was no crisis 
when you talk, they tell you oh, there was Doomsaw crisis. Doomsaw was a failure of government when the, the, the government, the President Mama came in July 2012. There was no Doomsaw. He went on to win elections in December, six months after being president. He wanted to win elections in December 2012. Went on to be president for one whole year. December 2013, that's when Doomso started. He had been president for one and a half hours. Doomso doesn't creep on you. The science will be there. So to sit down for the whole system to collapse that the unanimous Russian power, you can't blame anybody. That's a self-induced problem. But this particular IMF, we all know there's a huge global crisis. I've just told you how one small company, how COVID affected us. Mm. And still affecting us because because of COVID, we still can't do our francophone business. And it cost us 2.7, 2.6 million cities a month. Mm. That's the value of that business. Just one small company. Multiply it across. And they said, go and to the, UK today. I can't imagine that you can go to a shop in UK and they won't allow you to buy what you want to buy. And you go to places in America, mm -hmm. they are taking their planes to go and bring them. No, but food. with all of this, I mean, the Ghanaian out there who is even watching right now is interested in our own situation and, yes. and what can be in done. In our own situation, you know, look, to, as to, to speak, help us. I mean, the speak. president recently was saying that we should pray, you know, and look to God to help us come out of this situation. I think when he met the the bishops at the Methodist Church, but you yeah. have you have to give to God what is God. I'm sure this morning you've prayed. Yes, but you've still come to work. Mm -hmm. I have prayed, and I'm still here. I'm going to work. So prayer is just essential. But um, the current difficulty is the movement of the city. Okay, as uh, it translates uh, directly to cost of living. Yes, and on that, I want you to hold let, that let thought, me finish, um, okay. so that we take a short break and return right. and deal with it. The, the to earn some money for yourself. Yes. <laughs> so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Uh, this is GH today. You're welcome back to the show. This is GH Today here on GH1 Television. I've been having a conversation with the MD for the State Transport Company, uh, Nana Komiya. Before we went on the break, we were talking uh, about the state of the economy and how we can uh, get respite. And, I mean, we talked about the depreciation of the city. Recently, Guta has threatened to close their shops because the, 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 the alarming rate at which the city is depreciated, the city has lost about 50 percent or so of its value you know up to, up to this point and it's it's biting hard they decided to close down you know the shop their shops on monday because of the effect it is having and it's basically having an impact on everything else and that's also one problem that we seem not to have been able to deal with when 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 we we, we were under the impression that this economic management team can really deal with the falling of the city because it's one of the the things that they themselves complained about when they were in opposition yes uh, uh, in 2014 the city um, lost about 40 percent of its value mm -hmm. from january to date it's lost about 30 percent 32 percent yeah we are hoping that they will not lose up to 40 percent i mean now the city is around 10 now to a dollar yes it's, it's lost about 35 percent of its value now what is the government doing um the government is getting a facility from african afri exit bank of 700 million dollars it's been approved by parliament the drawdown is going to start by the end of this month mm -hmm. so by the end of this month we're getting about 700 million dollars into the system the cocoa syndication, the co well, let's say cocoa sales, the cocoa sales season is coming on next month. Normally, we take the money up front from the loan syndication. That's going to bring in a minimum $1.5 billion. So that should stabilize the city going on to the Christmas and to the new year, 2023. And then the IMF money, we are we as we estimate that the we are estimated to get three billion support three billion dollars from the imf and that should be coming in february march and that should tide us over so um we can understand that currently the city is in free fall yes but with these measures particularly the the afri exim facility that is coming down end of this month 
and the cocoa uh, uh, facility mm -hmm. that is coming in uh, end of September. We should be able to stabilize the city going into the into the high demand Christmas New Year season, and then when the IMF uh, facility kicks in, mm -hmm. part of the three billion kicks in from February next year. And but the government is also doing a lot of things to stabilize the balance of payments difficulties. Uh, <coughs> expenditure has been cut dra dramatically. Is it working? The, is the, it, is the, it working? the government should bring the figures, but they mm -hmm. can be. They can be. Look. The travel, travel expenditure alone of government officials is big. And if you can, the government cuts that travel expenditure by 50%. And you know, every government official that's traveling gets per diem in dollars. Yes. Government has announced that it's cutting that expenditure by 50%. Mm -hmm. It's cutting the fuel allocation to government officials. At my salary, government is taking a 30%. So the consolidated funds? Yes. You know. So... Um, it shows that government is willing to do something. Um, and should government, they, uh, Ghanaians have confidence in the look, government's look, look at the record. To, look at the record, look at the record from 2017 to 2019. Look at that record. And put your faith in government. And look at the measures that have been done. Look, one of the main reasons why the dollar drains away is because of importation. We are an import-dependent economy. We've said all the time that we must export. We must add value. The one district, one factory program, to date, you have about 130 new factories running as we speak. Yesterday, I was, two days ago, I was reading that the first factory has actually doubled production. I saw a report yesterday that said that when you go to the major supermarkets in this country, 31% of the products are made in Ghana. You know, and, and it's increasing. It shows you that there's a lot of value addition going on. Mm. There's a lot of domestic production going on. Okay. When all these factories are in full production and we can cut down the imports, long term, these are the, the kind of things that will, that will okay. make sure. All right, sure. The use that, which is for young people, uh, with, there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. So young people have to be directed into entrepreneurship. The use that program where a lot of money is going to be devoted to helping young people set up their own businesses so they can generate employment. Okay. Uh, and you didn't have these measures in the, in the last uh, 10 years. Right. Um, we, 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 unfortunately, we run out of time, and so we have to be wrapping up here. And uh, we, we'll, we'll have to go back. We have to definitely continue this conversation and do it again. So we'll have to have you in the studio again at another time. I would, not, I, I would not charge you. Yes. <laughs> so that we can, uh, we can really get into the issues, you know, as, as we should. But Nanakomi, I'm grateful that you joined us it's in my pleasure. this morning. It's my pleasure. Uh, for the very first time. And we hope to see you again. I'll be here. Nana Komia is the MD for the STC, the State Transport Company, speaking to us this morning here on GH Today. And on that note, we're wrapping up the show. And we would want to say thank you very much for watching. We'll be here again tomorrow to bring you another edition of The Breakfast Show, uh, the GH Today here on GH1 Television. My name is Lantam Papanko. Enjoy the rest of your day.